Hey everyone, welcome back to The Crafty Couple. Today we've got a mega video that's going to be 50 Dollar Tree DIY planters. And if you'd like to watch a sped up version with just music, we'll have a link so that you can click through and watch that on our Crafty Couple vlog channel. Thanks for watching, we hope you enjoyed today's video. For this project, we're using the six by eight inch canvas frames. And just like we have been, remove the canvas and just use the frame itself. We did listen to your comments, so we're gonna remove the whole canvas from it instead of cutting it out. And I'm interested to know what you guys like to do with that. Let us know in the comments what are some of your favorite projects that you use the extra canvas for. We're also going to be using these tumbling tower blocks. I ended up using 12 of them and 4 of these canvas frames. The next part we'll want to go ahead and stain all of the blocks and canvas frames. Our favorite stain that we've been using is this dark walnut from Minwax. And we'll have a link for that in the description below. Once they're all stained, we can start gluing them together. As always, we typically use hot glue just for time purposes. If you're wanting a stronger hold, I would definitely recommend E6000 or maybe like a Gorilla Glue. Uh, that way it'll last a little bit longer for you. This part is completely optional. What I'm doing is gluing the blocks on the bottom of the frames. I felt like it just gave it a little bit better look and added to the overall design. What I'm doing is gluing another block onto these that we've already glued on the bottom of the frames. And you want to make sure you're gluing it onto the actual block and not the frame, since we want these to sit a little bit lower than the frames themselves. Next what we want to do is place our canvas frames on a piece of foam board and trace the inner square. And we'll just cut that out with a razor blade. And what that will allow us to do is place it at the very bottom of our box planner and that will hold anything that we put in there. As you see, I'm gluing right here and then we'll just slide that foam piece down in there. For the middle sides of our box, we're gonna use a piece of poster board and I measured it at 12 inches long and five and a half inches tall. After we've got our lines made, we can go ahead and cut that piece out and use it as a template. And I just lined it up on the rest of the poster board that I had, traced it, and then cut out the three other pieces that we need. For our box, we decided to do a fold at every half inch. So what I'm doing here is measuring in a half inch, making a line, and then we're gonna start folding there. Just fold it back and forth all the way down to the 12 inch mark. Now it's very easy as you start folding to get bigger and bigger folds. So just keep an eye on it. You wanna keep them as close to that half inch mark as you can. Once all our pieces are folded, we can go ahead and use this brilliant silver spray paint. That's gonna give us the base for our metal look. To distress it and give it more of a metal look, I'm using this ink chalk paint from Waverly. We'll have a link for that in the description below. I like to dry brush it on and then use a wet and dry paper towel to blend it in and give it a little bit uh, more of a refined look so there's not those harsh paint strokes. After we've painted all of our pieces, we can start gluing in all of our sides to the planter box. I started by gluing it in the corner and then adding a little bit of glue at the very top and then at the bottom, that way we'll hold it a little bit more flush against the canvas frame. I tried to do all of my gluing and seams in the corners where the frames are, that way we don't see them as much. So if you do have a little bit of that extra poster board, go ahead and cut that off.
For the flowers, we're using lamb's ear and lavender from Walmart and cotton from Dollar Tree and Hobby Lobby. It took us a little bit of time to figure out the arrangement, so we didn't show that. If you'd like to see that, please let us know in the comments so we can show you next time. We're going to be making that boho planter and we're going to be using these two different types of nautical rope from Dollar Tree. The first thing I decided to do was completely take apart one whole rope into the three strands. Now I wanted it to have a little bit different of a look than just twisted up rope so that's why I took it all apart. What I'm doing is putting a little bit of glue here on the end and I'm going to go through and braid the entire rope. So find something a little bit heavier that you could put on the end just to make it easier for you. And then what I did is went through the whole thing and braided it all back together. Once you have it all braided together, you can go ahead and cut off the excess and then put a little bit of hot glue on the end here and twist that together to hold it from falling apart. Now that we have our braided rope, we can go ahead and start gluing it. Now this is just a vase that we had from Dollar Tree. Originally, we were gonna use it for a different project a while ago. That's why it's painted white, but essentially you can use this on any size or style vase that you like. So the most important part is to have this bottom row completely glued down. And then after that, you can wrap the rope around a few times and then glue it down. The main thing you wanna do is have that bottom row and the top row completely glued. And the other thing here is once we've gone around quite a few times and we're getting close to the end of the rope, make sure you pay attention because you want to wrap it to where you're when you're cutting it and you're ending that rope, it's on the back side of the vase where we first started because you don't want to have it wrap around to the front and then have that seam. And then what I'm doing here is moving on to that softer white rope. And again, I completely unraveled that but what I'm gonna use is just one strand of those three. And again, I'm just gluing those ends together so they don't fray. So this is what I was talking about a little bit earlier is we're not going to use the entire rope. We want to strategically cut this so that it's at the back where we first started. So make sure to line that up, go ahead and cut that and then we can glue that down and then we'll start with our other rope right there. So I decided to start in the middle. So about half of my vase is the braided rope and then half is this softer white strand. And you can do it really however you guys would like. You play around with different design ideas. Hopefully this just gives you a little bit of inspiration on how you can create it yourself. And then I just ended up using the white rope to go all the way up to the top. So I ended up using eucalyptus from Walmart. I think it's $1.50 for pick. I used two of them. Definitely go check out what Walmart has. They have an awesome selection for you guys at a really good price. For this project, I wanted to dupe something that I saw from West Elm and it was this really cute planter. I thought I could do that for a lot cheaper using this magic modeling clay that I found at Dollar Tree. When you take it out of the package, it will be super stiff and so all I did was just play with the clay for a little while, run it under some water until it got this texture.
This is three packs put together and I just flattened it out quite a bit and then stretched it over this planter and I'm going to just be pushing it all over so that it fills most of this planter. I will have to use two more here in a minute or about one and a half to fill the rest of the planter. And like I said earlier, I had to grab two more, so that makes five packs total, but this was more than enough to finish the rest of the planter. For the bottom and other smaller pieces that it just doesn't cover, just grab little tiny pieces of the clay and put it over. It's really, really simple to do. It gives it a nice texture. You can, if you don't like this texture from using your hand, you can grab like a piece of parchment paper or something like that and roll it so it's a lot flatter. I did not mind how this looked at all. I thought it made it look a lot more unique and almost homemade. Then for the top, just to give it a clean line, I'm just kind of pushing on it so that the top of the planter almost cuts all of the modeling clay. To give it those lines, I just went in with a popsicle stick and I'm going to be pushing it down vertically. And then in a little bit, we will be doing horizontal lines. But right now, I just pushed it in, made sure that it looked nice, then went over just a little bit and did the same thing. This worked really, really well for me. I thought about using like a piece of string or something like that. That would also work. I did do vertical lines almost around the whole entire thing, but right here I am doing horizontal lines. So just do the same thing that we've been doing, but kind of roll it across the planter so that it makes a really nice line. And then on the other side where these horizontal lines end, we will just continue the vertical lines. This is what it looked like when it was finished before it dried. I did let it dry overnight, that's what it recommends. And then this is what it looks like completely dry. To finish it off, I just spray painted it with Satin Almond Spray Paint from Krylon. We're going to use this pot that we got in the garden area and spray paint it white with this semi-gloss spray paint. I would recommend using a high gloss if you can find it. What we want to do is create kind of a glass or ceramic look. Next, I'm going to take this grass from the Dollar Tree and unravel it and pull each of these little stems out. That way we can spread it out in the pot and they're not so bunched together. The stems that you pull out are a little bit smaller and shorter than the ones that go around the outside, so you'll just want to line those up and trim them. I think I ended up using about six of these from Dollar Tree. I just used some of this foam from Dollar Tree to put in the bottom and hold the grass. Personally, I thought the outer parts of the grass looked a little bit cheaper and not as good as the stems, so I placed those in the middle. And then once I used all of that, I started placing all of the smaller stems around the outside. The last thing I did was take a little bit of twine and tied it around the base just to hold some of the grass so they weren't falling over the sides. This next project's probably one that I've enjoyed the most recently. It's really simple, but gives a, a very nice high-end modern look. So what we're doing is we're gonna start with these two square 
I guess vases or glasses from Dollar Tree and I'm gonna use just some masking tape to go around both of these and we're just taping it off so that no paint gets on them and for one of them I'm gonna do just one strip of tape and the other one I'm gonna end up doing two strips as you can see right here we have the two different styles the one strip and the two strips one thing I forgot to do is put some tape or cover the inside since I am spray painting it. Again, just using this white high gloss spray paint from Rust-Oleum. You want to make sure you cover the inside because I ended up having to clean off a lot of paint. For the stand, we used some of this dark walnut stain and went ahead and stained these tumbling tower blocks and these little square wood cubes. To assemble our stand we're going to start with one of these little squares and just put some hot glue on one side and then we're going to glue these tumbling tower blocks all the way around on all four sides. While you're gluing these down you want to make sure that they're all flush with the top of the square so that when we put our plant on it it doesn't wobble or anything it just sits nice and flat. The next part is to glue these vertical pieces, so we're going to take another tumbling tower block and glue them vertically on each of the other tumbling tower blocks. And just like the other ones, we want to make sure we're gluing them on the very end and that they're flush with the end of that block. So this is going to be our smaller stand, so we just want to flip it upside down and then we're going to use four more of these little squares and glue those on the bottom and make sure that they are flush at the end of the other tumbling tower blocks. Here's the smaller stand that we just finished. And then to create the bigger stand, we did the exact same thing, but instead of gluing the little cubes on the bottom, we're just gonna glue an entire tumbling tower block. That way it just makes it stand a little bit taller and will give us a little bit more design and dimension when they're standing next to each other. Here's what your vases should look like once you've removed the tape. I did have a little paint that had dripped beyond the tape since it wasn't pushed down all the way. Now I did try to clean it up a little bit with a razor blade and think it turned out just fine. Now the last part here to finish it up is just to place the vase on the stands and then we're using this IKEA grass once again to complete the project. To start this project, we will grab two tins from Dollar Tree. The writing is really cute for other projects, but for this one I didn't want it on there, so I just grabbed 100% acetone and took off all the lettering. I distressed it with the Waverly chalk paint in the color ink and mineral, so here I'm taking a sponge and going over the whole entire thing with the mineral chalk paint, and then I will go in later with the ink and go around all the edges. So after the thin layer of the mineral chalk paint, go in with the ink and go around all of the high points. This is it all finished. I have just got this greenery from Ikea. You can use Dollar Tree greenery. This is just what we had on hand. So now we are going to build the actual hanging mechanism for these plants. So I grabbed two of these wooden stakes. They're in the yard sale section at Walmart. Make marks at 34 inches and at 17 inches on both of them and that's where we're going to cut them. Now 
What we use to cut all of our wood is this Black & Decker jigsaw, and there's a link in the description for that below. For the part that we'll actually use to hang the plants on is a plunger from Dollar Tree, and we are cutting off just the very bottom where the plunger twists on. And then go ahead and sand all your edges. And then I stained everything using the Minwax Dark Walnut Stain. You will need to drill six holes in this project, so two two inches down on each of the sticks and then on the ends of the plunger. To assemble it, we will put some hot glue right where that hole is and then we will put the nail through and just hot glue the two sides together. And then once those are attached, put some hot glue at the end of the plunger and then stick the nail all the way through. If there's a little bit sticking out, just take a hammer and hammer it down. Once you do the same thing for the other side, grab some floral wire from Dollar Tree and this is how we're going to hang the planters. After cutting them, I spray painted them black just so they weren't that gold color and then you're going to wrap it over the top and wrap it around both of the handles. And then you will do the exact same thing on the other side. You will grab one of these planters from Dollar Tree. I also found these stickers from Dollar Tree as well. We will just be peeling them up in the row and then putting them on the very top of the planter. And then I did the same thing, just down a row. I spray painted everything with the Rust-Oleum semi-gloss white spray paint. This is what it looks like finished. To add the greenery, I am just going to be cutting this floral foam, also from Dollar Tree, and putting it in the base. And then I thought this greenery from Dollar Tree worked perfect for this boho feel. This is the moss that I had on hand. I didn't really like that it was a little green, so I'm just putting it on this tin foil and I will be spray painting it black with the Rust-Oleum chalk paint. And then I'm going to be using the new adhesive spray from Dollar Tree and I will be spraying it onto the floral foam and putting the moss just directly on top of it. With that done, I just put the greenery inside. Now moving on to the smaller planter, I just grabbed this square glassware, also from Dollar Tree, and then I will be using the same stickers. This time I will be putting them on the top all the way around and then the bottom all the way around. I sprayed it all with the Rust-Oleum charcoal spray paint. For the greenery, this is just a succulent from Dollar Tree, also Dollar Tree rocks. Cutting the floral foam so I don't have to use as many rocks. I put that in the base, then the rocks, and then I stuck the succulent inside.
we're going to use this handle and it's either a mop or a broom handle same thing whichever one you want to use and i'm just using this simple handsaw you can get one like this from dollar tree and we're just cutting off those threads so we don't have to worry about that if there's a little bit left you can also sand that off but not really a big deal now we can take our handle and these universal tool hooks I'm going to be using three of them and we're going to spray paint both of these in this gloss black from Krylon. Next we're going to spray paint three of these flowers and garden tins. I'm using a high gloss white from Rust-Oleum and the reason why I did this is I want it to look a little bit more like a metal or ceramic than just a flat paint like chalk paint would look. And then what I'm doing is using some ink chalk paint to put a black line on that rim. Now I was going to also paint the flowers and garden black, but I couldn't really figure out a way that I thought looked good with like marker paint. So if you are wanting to do that, I would suggest then using the chalk paint because what you can do is after you've painted it with a few coats of chalk paint, you can actually go back and wet sand or, or wet distress over the lettering and it should come off and look really nice. The issue with the spray paint is when you're sanding it down, then it makes it rough and you lose that gloss finish and it just doesn't look really good. So to finish these planters, I'm using some greenery here from Ikea and from Walmart. These Ikea ones are a little bit more expensive, about $5 each. And then the Walmart ones, you can get a little bundle for about a dollar each. We probably used a couple of those for each um, container. I would also recommend giving everything that we painted today a nice clear coat to seal the paint. And then we're using three of these hooks, one on each end and then one right in the middle. To hang our planters, I'm using four of these plant hangers from Dollar Tree. Each of these hangers comes with three chains. Now the outside hangers, you only need one chain, so go ahead and take two of those off. And then the two middle ones only need two chains, so go ahead and remove one of those chains. And then we're gonna use this big hook to go on the pole. And then at the very bottom of these chains, there's a little hook here and that is meant to clip onto something now i went ahead and removed that completely and i used the very last link instead of using this piece you can see right here just remove that and use the very last link of the chain and it looks a lot better I saw these really cool hexagon boxes from Dollar Tree and I thought it could make a really cool modern planter. For this you will only need the base and you will spray paint it with the Rust-Oleum white spray paint. For the sides I just used a plunger from Dollar Tree and take off the bottom. Measuring from where the plunger was stuck on, you will measure at 5, 10, and 15 inches. That will make each of the stands 5 inches long. What we used to cut wood is this Black & Decker jigsaw. It is very affordable and has worked great for us. And there's a link in the description below. With all of the pieces cut, we will just need to sand them down. To create the part that will hold the planter, I'm using a 12 inch dowel from Dollar Tree. You will need three of them and I measured them at three and one eighth. Thank you. 
I stained everything using the Minwax Dark Walnut Stain. Let me know in the comments below if you have a favorite stain that we should try out. I measured about how far up I wanted the planter to go and I made a mark on all three of the wood pieces and that's where I'm gluing the smaller dowels onto. You will glue them all on sticking straight up on all three of the pieces. Now line them up so they are evenly spaced and do quite a bit of hot glue in the center to hold them. This is what it looks like fully painted and also I put floral foam inside to hold the fake plants and also we are going to put moss on top and I didn't want to have to fill it all with moss. The greenery and moss are also from Dollar Tree. I'm using this new spray adhesive from Dollar Tree and spraying it on top of all the floral foam. And then I'm sticking all the moss on top. I cut just a little bit of the end off and stuck the plant inside. Now you just need to stick the planter into the base. When I was finished, I didn't like how bright green the moss was, so I went over just with some black chalk paint to make it a little bit duller. Also, you can just use rocks, dirt, or a darker moss. The first thing we're going to start with are the wood planks from Dollar Tree. They come in a pack of six and you will need two packs total. The first thing we're going to do is take two of these planks and we're going to create a corner of our box. So we want to run a line of hot glue here, glue them together, and then I'm using this right angle ruler from Dollar Tree to try and get as close to a 90 degree angle I can. And you want to try and do that on each corner. And then after the glue's dried a little bit, I always like to go in that crease and add just a little bit more hot glue there. And then we can move on to adding our second side piece here. I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue on the end and then connect these right here, lining it up with that ruler again, trying to get it as straight as possible. And then for all of the seams, what I'm gonna do is cut these little craft sticks. You can get these from Dollar Tree as well. And we're gonna glue those on the seams to give that a lot more strength. Now, quick note, if you want to use something stronger like wood glue or E6000, I would recommend it, especially if you're gonna be putting this outside in the weather. That's gonna hold up a lot better than hot glue. With that being said, the hot glue and the way I built this really did work well and it is a strong structure for what it is. And if you're gonna have it inside, I think it would be just fine. But if you do want more of a permanent hold, definitely use something stronger. So it's a pretty straightforward project. It's a little bit more intricate than some that we do, but it is still very simple to do all of this. So as you can see, we're just creating this rectangle shape with these wood planks and just gluing it all the way around until we meet up with the first plank that we started with. And then of course, like I said, using these craft sticks on those seams. So I've already glued it down here. I'm putting some glue on that and on the edge of the wood. And then I'm gonna finish it off with my last wood plank. Now, this is gonna create one rectangle and you wanna do two of these total. So you're gonna do the exact same thing that we just did so that we have a total of two. Now to connect the top rectangle and the bottom rectangle, I'm just doing the same thing with the craft sticks. Since we're gonna have a seam there, I'm gonna line these up and I'm going to add a lot of hot glue over the seam here and then press my craft stick in place. I'm doing one right here in the center and then I'm gonna do two smaller ones on each side of that so that essentially I have a craft stick running all the way along that seam. 
And when you're doing this, don't worry about trying to get them to line up perfectly with each other. It's okay if there's a little bit of a gap. I would just look at the space that you need to cover here and then cut it to as close to that size as you can so that you have coverage almost all the way along that seam, but it doesn't have to fit or line up perfectly. So once we have both sides here, it's starting to strengthen the structure a lot. And then we're gonna just add a popsicle stick to each end here to complete all of those seams. Like I said, it is actually pretty strong for what it is. And I think you'd be fine using the hot glue if you're just gonna have this inside and using some fake artificial plants, I think you'd be fine. If you're adding a lot more weight and using real ones, you may wanna use something stronger. Now to add even more strength in the corner, since we don't have any popsicle sticks in there, I'm gonna be using these little tumbling tower blocks from Dollar Tree. And I'm gonna glue one of these in each corner at the bottom here, just to strengthen up those corner seams, since we don't have any craft sticks in those spots. Now we're gonna add some more tumbling tower blocks to create a little ledge for some foam board to rest on. And that's gonna give us a bottom to this planner so that we can put stuff into it and it will hold it. So you wanna put these in going vertically and glue them to the very bottom of the planner and then do that on both of the long sides. Once we have those in place, we can line up our planner next to this foam board and just put it in one corner and then you're going to draw and trace around that entire uh, structure. And then we're going to go ahead and cut two of those out and those are going to slide in and rest on those little lips. We'll also glue those. They'll be a little bit big, so you'll just want to hold it up and then cut off the extra amount so that those can slide in. You want to try and keep it as close as you can so that those will still be able to rest on the tumbling tower blocks. And don't worry about making a perfect line. These are gonna be tucked down inside the box so you're not even gonna see them. You just wanna make sure you're not cutting off too much. So if you're a little nervous about that, just cut a little bit at a time because you want it to be able to slide down in there and then rest on those blocks. Once we have those in there, we're gonna run some glue along all of the edges there just to give it a little bit more strength. And we're gonna do that on the top and the bottom. Now that we have our box pretty much complete, we can move on to staining it. I'm using some early American stain and then I tried to give it a lighter look. So what I'm doing is as I dip my rag in the stain, I'm just trying to wipe off as much excess as I can so that I'm not just completely saturating this and I'm just getting a very light stain on here. All I did was one coat for that as well. Next, we're gonna be creating our stand for the planner box. And we're gonna be using three of these wood stakes that you can pick up from Walmart. And they're about $1.80 each. You can find them in a section that's kind of by the tools and paint. They have some like yard sale signs, for sale signs, and it's a little area there where they have these wood stakes. And we're gonna measure out to 10 inches and we're gonna need two pieces at 10 inches. So I'm gonna measure that, mark it, and then I'm just using this little jigsaw to cut it. Next, I'm gonna line these up on the outside of our box so that we can measure the gap that we need to go in between here. I ended up cutting these at seven and a half inches. It was just over seven and a quarter. So I wanted a little bit more than that. So totally you're gonna to need two pieces at 10 inches and eight pieces at seven and a half inches. And to start building this, we're gonna take one of our 10 inch pieces and one of the seven and a half inch pieces, and we're gonna glue that seven and a half inch piece to the bottom coming down from that 10 inch piece. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side here. And we're just gonna repeat that same process to build another U shape. So grab another 10 inch piece and two of the seven and a half inches and glue those coming down from the bottom of that 10 inch piece. And then you should have two identical pieces here. 
Next, we wanna determine how far up we want this stand to come on our box. So I'm just using this middle crease here and I'm gonna line it up with that and then take a pencil and mark on the other side here where that's gonna be and then that's where I can glue on my other pieces so that they'll come right underneath the box and hold that in place. So that's a really simple way to do this. Hold it up and then you can mark it with your pencil. And to make sure that those lines are in the same spot for our other piece, I'm gonna hold those up to each other and then just draw that same line all the way across so that those are both in the same spots. Now we can glue our pieces that are gonna go underneath the box and we're just gluing these right below that line that we just drew because that's where the planner box is gonna sit on here and we're gonna do that on both sides. So just make sure that you're gluing that just below that line. And then just to add a little bit more strength to those seams, I'm gonna run a little line of hot glue on both the top here and then the bottom of those, just to give a little bit of extra strength. Once that's dried, we can connect these two pieces now and we're gonna put some hot glue just below those lines that we drew. And then we're gonna connect these together. I would press down firmly and hold it in place to give it some time to dry and then run some glue in those seams. And then for the bottom pieces, this is gonna add a little bit more character to the design and then some strength as well. So I'm measuring up one and a half inches from the bottom, drawing the line on all four of these pieces. And then we're gonna glue these just above that line. And those are gonna connect to both sides. So I'll just put a little bit of hot glue on each side and then we can kind of fit this in here, hold it in place and then again, run some glue on those seams to give it some added strength. Once we have our stand all put together, we can move on to painting. And this is where you can kind of customize it how you want. I'm using some of this ink chalk paint from Waverly and I'm gonna use some water just to water it down. It's very thick paint and this will give you better coverage. And then you can go on with a second coat with just the paint and touch up any of those areas. But depending on your home decor style, you could paint this different colors, same with the stain on the box. If you wanted to paint that or stain it differently to fit your style more, you could definitely do this. I wanted to go with more of a modern style with this and I really love how it turned out. Um, but be creative, do it your own way if you want or if you wanna copy it exactly like this, you're more than welcome to. We'd just like to give you some ideas. This next part is optional. I'm adding some more tumbling tower blocks just below the top of our box. And I'm gonna add two to each longer side and one to the shorter sides. And the reason I'm doing this is I cut out another piece of foam board to go on top here. Now, I wouldn't glue this one down. I would make it so that you can remove it if you like. It just depends on how you wanna decorate this box, what greenery you have, and if you're using rocks or whatever you wanna put in here. So as you can see, you can put another piece of foam board right on top here and remove it easily, but it makes it so that you don't have to have as much product to cover this and make it look full. Now I'm just measuring in between each of these wood planks and making a little hole. That's where my plants are gonna go. I just eyeballed it and it worked out just fine for me. And then you'll just wanna make those a little bit bigger so you can slide whatever plants you're using in there. If you're doing it the same with me, obviously if you're adding more plants, you'll need more holes and so on. And as you can see, adding the top foam board allows us to use way less rocks instead of filling that whole gap with rocks. But if you want to have more volume and more things in here, you can always remove that and use the entire space. So that's why I did it. That's really it as far as this project. I absolutely love how it turned out. I hope you guys did as well. It only costs a few dollars to create and I hope that you guys enjoy it if you do make it.
For this project, we're going to be creating a really simple planter using these wooden crates from Dollar Tree. And the first thing that we're going to do is stain two of them with this early American stain from Minwax. And you will want to make sure that you're getting the inside and the outside since you will be able to see into these a little bit. Once we have those stained, we can move on to painting this third one. And I'm just going to be using this ink chalk paint from Waverly. Any black paint really will work for this though. If you are using this ink though, I would water it down. It'll make it a lot easier to paint this. Once we have that painted and the other two stained, we can go ahead and assemble these. And the first thing that we're going to do is take this bottom piece, which is the black one, and we're going to put a little bit of hot glue all the way around the top. And then we'll take one of our stained pieces and glue that on top of that one. Once we have our first stained crate glued on there, we can move on to adding our second. And again, all we're gonna be doing is adding some glue on the top and then gluing it on top there. A really, really simple project, but I think it looks absolutely beautiful when you're done. This could go with modern, industrial, kind of rustic, or if you wanted to do more of uh, some white paint with the stain and do some distressing, definitely could go with farmhouse or modern farmhouse. And then lastly, all I'm gonna be doing is adding some of this onion grass from Dollar Tree. I cut the stems off just so it would fit a little bit easier and not as tall. And then I just placed three of these in the back row that you can see here and then three in the front and fan them out a little bit. And that's really all there is to this. Again, a very, very simple project. This project is going to be a pottery barn dupe and I got this for $2.49 from Savers and it retails at Pottery Barn for $130, which is insane with how easy this is to make. So all I did was grab some painter's tape that we also got from Dollar Tree and wrap it around the vase, just make sure it's pretty even. You will want to wrap tape around the whole top part because we're going to be spray painting it and you don't want to get any spray paint on the whole entire top, just the bottom area. This time I'm going to be using a gloss black spray paint also from Krylon because I wanted it to just not have the matte look. I did want it to look quite shiny. So then I just took the tape off. Here I was trying to be satisfying. It kind of sort of worked, but not as satisfying as I wanted it to be. But this is how it looks. It's called a color blocked vase, and I am absolutely in love. You can fill it with any flowers that you want. Ours we got on sale, I believe, a few months ago when they were trying to get rid of their fall stuff at Michael's or Joann's, and we got them, I think, like 75% off. And then for this project, I stained two 6x8 canvases, broke off the corners once again, and I'm going to hot glue them in the middle. Instead of making a lantern, I decided to turn it sideways and put these glass jars from Dollar Tree inside. To finish it off, I just put greenery from Walmart inside. For this one, we're gonna use this little storage container and use the antique pewter spray paint to give it that nice old metal look. We're gonna use five of these little bottles from Dollar Tree. Go ahead and remove the caps, we won't need those. And then we're gonna apply a couple coats of this chalk paint. We use the white Waverly chalk paint. 
Once the spray paint has dried, we can go in and start distressing. I like to use a combination of black and brown. And of course, we're gonna go in here and do some dry brushing and then also use a wet and dry paper towel to remove some of this and give it a really good distressed look. Now that the bottles are done, we can go in and do the same thing. Just use some of that black and brown combination and lightly dry brush on the bottles. Next, we're gonna add some handles with this nautical rope from Dollar Tree. I didn't measure it, I just eyeballed it and made sure they were both the same size. And then I'm just putting a little bit of hot glue on the side and underneath that lip and then gluing on the handle. We just found these flowers at Walmart the other day. It's this whole bundle for only $3. I think that they're really, really pretty. And then also this lamb's ear from Walmart for only $2. You can always use Dollar Tree flowers. We really enjoy the Walmart ones though. We feel like it gives it a much higher end look than the Dollar Tree one. We used the whole bouquet of flowers and we ended up putting three flowers in each bottle. And then we used about half of the lamb's ear to put in each bottle. I found it was easiest to put the lamb's ear in first and then put the flowers in so you can kind of arrange it how you'd like. And to finish this project, the last thing we need to do is just place the bottles with the flowers inside the little crate. For our next project, we're gonna use some foam board from Dollar Tree and we're gonna cut it so the height is five inches and the length is 12 inches. I'm gonna start by measuring up five inches and I'm gonna make a few marks on the foam board that way I can make a straight line. And this is just a metal ruler that we also got from Dollar Tree. Now that I have the marks for the height, I'm gonna go ahead and measure out 12 inches and do the same thing, just make a few marks at the 12 inch mark. And then I will go back and line up the ruler and draw a straight line at 12 inches and at five inches. Once we have the rectangle marked out, I found it's easiest to cut the foam board with a razor blade. Now that we have that cut out, we can use it as a template. So place that on top of the foam board and then just trace it out and cut it with the razor blade. For the two ends of the box, what we're gonna do is create a five inch by five inch square. So right here, I'm just measuring out five inches and up five inches, and then we'll cut that out to go on the end of the box. Once those are cut out, you should have two five inch by 12 inch rectangles and two five inch by five inch squares. And that is what we'll make our planter out of. For the shiplap effect, I just drew a line at each inch mark in between the five inches. And I felt that was a pretty good spacing and give it a really good look. Once you've marked it off, go ahead and line up your ruler on all of those marks and draw a straight line. 
Once you have all of your lines drawn, you can go back now with a Sharpie and just do another straight line over the pencil. For the distressing on this planter, I'm using Waverly chalk paint in mineral and ink. And I'm just going to get a little bit of each of those on the brush and make sure that you have most of that paint off. We're using a dry brush technique on this. I didn't want to give it a lot of distressing, just a little bit. That's why you want to make sure that most of that paint is off of the brush. I forgot to show you the bottom piece that I cut. That's actually gonna be five and a half inches by 12 inches. It needs to be a little bit wider to accommodate the foam board that we're gluing on here. So what we wanna do is start with one side and just glue it onto the top of that bottom piece and then work our way all the way around. Now we're gonna create the metal end caps that go on each corner of our planter. We're using some poster board from Dollar Tree and we decided to make them two inches wide and five and a half inches tall. And what we're gonna do is measure these out on the poster board and cut them out and then paint them to give them that metal look. Once we have all of those cut out, the next part, we want to go ahead and fold each of those in half the long way. To give it that metal look, we're going to start by using this brilliant silver Krylon spray paint. Once those have dried, we're going to go in and use some ink Waverly chalk paint to distress it. Again, I like to dry brush and then also use a wet and dry paper towel to give it an aged look. I'm also dabbing the brush on there as well as using brush strokes. We're going to go in and dry brush these thumbtacks as well. You're going to need 24 total, uh, but we want a little bit more paint on than what we do the end caps. We want them almost black, but a little bit of that silver poking through. Now that all of our distressing is complete, we can go in and glue all of these poster board end caps on the planter. To finish up this planter, the last part is to put all of these thumbtacks in. We decided to do three on each side. Now that that's complete, we can go ahead and put our greenery in. We're just using this floral foam from Dollar Tree. And please be careful, the thumbtacks are sticking through. The greenery we're using today is from Walmart. I think it looks a lot better than what you would get at Dollar Tree. First project, I grabbed all different types of succulents that Dollar Tree is carrying right now. and a plastic garden dish. 
I started out painting the whole thing with the mineral chalk paint by Minwax and you can just get that at your local Walmart. After two coats of this chalk paint, it was looking a little bit flat to me, so I mixed a little bit of black in with the gray just to give it a little more dimension and I also did the same with white paint as well. And then to blend it together, I just used a wet paper towel. Then I added some white rocks from Dollar Tree. And now it's time to add all your succulents. We're gonna start with these little puzzle pieces from Dollar Tree and go ahead and remove all the pieces. We aren't gonna need any of them. We do wanna make sure that we're sanding off this text on each one so it doesn't show. And then again, we're gonna go through and stain it with that dark walnut stain. Once we've stained all of our pieces, we can start gluing them together. Uh, I just started with one end and started gluing all the way around. Next part is to complete the pole and I thought it'd be a good idea to just take one of these little balls from Dollar Tree and cut it into a quarter. And so what we want to do is cut it in half to begin with and then take that half and cut that in half which will give us a quarter of the ball. And then I think it looks just like a pole that you would find on a lot of drawers nowadays. And next part is to give it a nice coat of this charcoal rustoleum chalk paint. While we're waiting for the paint to dry on our pole, we can create the base of our drawer by just using some of this foam board from Dollar Tree. I just lined it up and traced along the bottom to give us a square to go inside. And then to give us something to lay that square piece on, I'm just gluing some of these little square pieces from Dollar Tree at the very bottom. And then that way we can slide that foam piece down to the very bottom and it will have something to rest on without just going all the way through. The last part of our box is to add that pole and I'm using another one of these little square pieces to kind of measure the center of where I want this to go. And I'm just gonna glue that on. The reason I'm using this piece is again, just like we'll use the tower blocks from earlier in this video, it gives us more surface area to actually glue this on instead of just trying to glue along those little edges of the plastic piece. And I think if you guys do this, it'll make it a lot easier for you to get that done. To complete our project, we're going to use these flowers that we got from Amazon and we'll have a link for those in the description below. For the base of this project, you will need an extra long skewer. Make marks at 4, 8, 12, and 16 inches. To cut this, I just used a pair of wire cutters and it's pretty easy to cut and then just cut on all of those lines and you'll have four pieces total.
The pieces that we just cut will make up the side of the base, but now we need to cut the bottom. For the base, you will measure just a little bit wider than your glasses. I measured mine and it was about three and one eighth. So I did just three inches and one eighth. Then I measured again, three and one eighth. And those are my two lines and that's where I'll cut with the wire cutters again. With all our pieces cut, we just need to sand the ends. Right here, I'm just measuring where I want the base to come across. I didn't have an exact measurement. I knew I didn't want it to be right in the middle. I wanted it to be a little bit lower. And then just make sure all the lines are the same on all four of the sticks. You will take two of the longer sticks and you will hot glue the smaller stick in between. For the other one, the middle stick needs to be cut in half. And then just glue on both of the sticks the smaller middle pieces. When that is dry, hot glue that middle piece to the other middle piece, and then you will do the same exact thing for the other side. The reason I did it this way is because I didn't want one of the sticks on top of the other middle piece. One, because one would have to be higher and I didn't like that look, and also the glass wouldn't be able to balance in the middle. This is what it looks like with the base completed, and we are going to go ahead and spray paint it with the Krylon Fusion All-in-One Gloss Black Spray Paint. And then for the glass, I just grabbed a cool shaped one from Dollar Tree. The greenery that I'm using is just from Walmart. You can grab pretty much any greenery from Dollar Tree, Walmart, or anything like that. This is what it looks like finished with the black spray paint. Now all you do is place the glass in the center and it is all done. This project is going to be really, really easy and it came out a lot better than I was hoping. So all I did was grab these dowels that I got from Dollar Tree and I'm going to be placing them on top of this gift box also from Dollar Tree. I kind of just spaced them however I wanted to. Um, if I was to do this again, I would definitely kind of measure it out a little bit more and make it look a little bit more straight. I did have some that curved. So try and get ones that are completely straight. I just went in and did all of the corners first so that I could stand it up to make sure all of the dowels were even in the end. Once I put them on all four corners, I started placing them in the middle and I set it up so that I could make sure all the dowels were even to the ground. So this one that you can see here, I kind of tilted it at a diagonal a little bit so it's closer at the bottom than it is at the top. So just be really careful about that. And then I just kept making sure they were about the same distance apart and put them all around all of the sides. If you are ever wondering the supplies that we used, how many, or things like that, you can look in the description below.
This is what it looks like when it is finished. I did decide to paint all of it with the Waverly chalk paint in the color ink. I would spray paint it if I was to do this again. Painting it ended up taking a really long time and it didn't cover up all of the texture. So just go in with some matte black spray paint and spray paint the whole thing probably with two or three coats. For this project, we're going to use this glass vase from Dollar Tree and some twine. What we want to do is hot glue one row at the very bottom of the vase. And you want to make sure that that's all the way glued on. Once the first row is glued on and completely dry, what we can do is just start wrapping it around the vase. And we don't really need to glue any of this. What we're doing is just tightly wrapping it around. And we're going to do that all the way up the vase. Once you get to the top of the vase, we want to make sure we glue all of that down. That way the top and the bottom are completely glued and the twine won't come undone. To clean it up a little bit and get rid of some of these little strands, I just used this lighter and went across the whole thing. Obviously it's fire so be very careful, but it will clean up a lot of that. The next part, we're going to put some masking tape all the way around it. I eyeballed it about one third you could do that or halfway really whatever kind of design you want to do and what we're going to do is take this white waverly chalk paint and paint the entire bottom part of this while the paint is still wet go ahead and pull off the masking tape as you can see, there's more of the little fuzzy strands that are poking out. So we'll just take our lighter again and singe that and clean it up a little bit. To complete this project, I used some floral foam from Dollar Tree to give it a little bit more height when I put the grass in. And I'm just using some of this grass from Dollar Tree. We're going to use this planter from Dollar Tree and go ahead and put a couple coats of this white Waverly chalk paint on it. After our two coats have dried, we can move on to distressing. I'm going to go ahead and use this mineral chalk paint from Waverly. And we're gonna start with uh, dry brushing it on. And if you guys do make any mistakes or it goes on a little bit heavy, don't worry, you can always go back with some of that white paint to cover it up. Next we can move on with putting the twine around the bottom. I would pick whichever side you think looks best and then start on the opposite side. We want to start on the back here to try and hide the seams. And then we're going to start right where that lip is and then glue all the way around and cover that little bottom section. To finish this project, we just need to place our greenery. This first greenery is from Dollar Tree, and this is from Ikea. We ended up using the Ikea greenery since it was left over from another project. It didn't cost us anything more. It is a little bit more expensive though, so if you're wanting to go to like Walmart or Dollar Tree, you can definitely get something more around a dollar.
This is the chicken wire basket from Hobby Lobby that I've been wanting for a really long time, but I didn't want to spend the $25, so we are going to recreate this using Dollar Tree supplies. To start out, you're going to need four of the 12 inch dowels from Dollar Tree, and you will need eight of the six inch dowels. I started by measuring how wide I wanted it, and mine ended up being around five and five eighths inch, and you'll cut four of those all the same size. To cut them was really easy, just use some wire cutters and go all the way around until it snaps. If yours doesn't end up exactly this size, don't worry about it, you can really do this basket pretty much any size that you want. Now I'm measuring how tall I want the basket, and mine ended up being 5 and 3 fourths inch. And then cut 4 of the 6 inch dowels to that size. You'll want to send the edges just a little bit on all of the cut pieces. To assemble the frame, we're going to grab the dowels that we cut first and we are going to glue them to the two 12 inch dowels. Then do the same exact thing for the other set of dowels. Once those have dried, we're going to grab the second set of dowels that we cut and we're going to put them straight up and hold it until it dries just a little bit with the hot glue. I would not recommend using A6000 for this project just because it does take a very long time to dry. Then just hop glue the top on. For the chicken wire look, you will need two trash bins from Dollar Tree and cut the whole top and the bottom off. Once that is done, there will be a thicker seam that you will cut all the way up. The bottom will not be as stretched out, so grab the sides and stretch this out just as much as you can. For the bottom, you will grab two more of the 12 inch dowels and you will put them on the bottom and just mark where that end is, cut it off and hot glue it so that we have a base. Lay the frame onto the chicken wire and just cut all the way around it for one of the sides. Now put the trash bin on one of the sides.
To secure this to the frame, we are going to be using hot glue. So you'll put little dots of hot glue where the wire touches the frame. When that is dry, take your wire cutters and cut all the little pieces sticking out. For the other side, you will do the exact same thing. If you are ever wondering about measurements or tools that we use, in the description box we do have a list of all of that available. With the two sides complete, it's time to work on the ends. Once again, just lay it on top of the trash bin and cut around it.
For this planner, we're gonna use this bucket that we got during the Valentine's time. And we're using this mineral chalk paint. What we're gonna do is apply two coats all the way around the bucket. You can do inside if you'd like to, but since we're filling it full of flowers, I chose not to do that. And the main thing here is we wanna avoid brush strokes. So what I did is I dabbed this paint all the way around it. Now, once we have the mineral, we're gonna go through and do the same thing with the white chalk paint. The main thing you want to make sure is that your sponge is watered down. So you wanna make sure that's wet. This paint, when it's watered down, will look a lot better. It won't look as harsh as if you were just dabbing fresh paint with no water. It just makes all of the paints blend a little bit better. After the white and the mineral has dried, we're gonna go through and do the same thing with black. It's the ink chalk paint by Waverly. Again, make sure that it's watered down. And for this project, I wanted to go for a very heavily aged and distressed look. So this black is really gonna help with that. We're gonna make sure that at the top and at the bottom, we add even more to give it some of that kind of rust and aging look. The next part, we'll use this truffle paint, and this is a, a pretty dark brown. And instead of going around the entire bucket, what we wanna do is just go along the bottom and the top and around the handles. And this is gonna give it more of that rusted look. And the last part, we're using this wax from Waverly, and this is an even darker brown. And so this is gonna give us a little bit more dimension and more rust. So I know there's a lot of layers and a lot of painting to this project, but it's really pretty easy. You just wanna make sure that your sponge is watered down and that you're adding those layers and making sure that they're drying in between each time. For our next project, we're gonna be creating a wood planter and we're gonna start by using these six by eight canvas frames. Now, I did get some inspiration from a planner I saw. I believe it was on Ikea's website and it was a lot bigger though, it was an outdoor one. So I thought it would be fun to recreate it and do it on a much smaller scale. Go ahead and remove the canvas from the frames. To start, we're gonna use these craft sticks that come in a pack of 60. And what I'm doing is just cutting it right at the top where the curve starts to straighten out on the stick. And we're gonna use four of these for each corner of the planner. After cutting the first one, you can go ahead and use that as a template and line it up with the other sticks and cut where needed. Now to cut them, all I'm using are a pair of regular scissors. These actually cut very easily and these craft sticks are from Dollar Tree as well. I didn't really do any real hard measurements when creating this. I just cut at the top where it started to curve and then when gluing these ones on, you just wanna glue it on the very corner and then give it a little bit of room at the top. As you can see, it's not flush with the canvas frame. It does stick up just a little bit. Now we wanna create the base for our planter. We can go ahead and use our other canvas frame and start gluing on the craft sticks. I ended up using eight for the base. Some of them may hang over the edge a little bit. That's fine, you can go ahead and use a razor like this and cut them off. They will come off very easily. Now that our base is complete, we wanna go ahead and glue it to the rest of our planter box. I ended up measuring an inch and a half from the bottom and gluing there.
For the rest of the wood sticks that go all the way around the planter, again, I didn't measure to any specific size. I just laid them out to where I thought they looked good on the box. And then from there, I made my line to cut at the top. And then once I had my template again, I just lined it up on the rest of the sticks and cut all the rest of them. For the longer sides of the planter, I ended up using nine sticks. And then for the shorter side, I ended up using seven. For this end piece, you want to make sure that it's lined up on the very end with the other longer sticks. That way there's no gap. Once you've completed all four sides, we can move on to staining or painting. We ended up using this dark walnut stain and went around the whole thing. To finish our planter, we can go ahead and place our greenery or flowers. We ended up using these picks from Dollar Tree. I thought they looked really pretty. Uh, very impressed with these actually. Uh, you can find similar ones at Walmart for just a little bit more. I ended up using eight of these and loved how it turned out. We're going to use three of these square glasses from Dollar Tree and this decorative sand in the color black. This is probably going to be one of the easier projects that we do today. All we're going to do is take three of these bags and pour one bag into each glass container. After pouring the sand, we can put in the greenery that we're using. This is some greenery that we had from Ikea, and this is from Dollar Tree. Either one will work and looks really great. We decided to go with the greenery from Ikea since we didn't want to cut this greenery. We were using it for other projects, but if you do use the Dollar Tree, I would recommend cutting it a little bit shorter. And the greenery that we're using from Ikea was a little bit more expensive. I believe it was right around $5. We ended up using two of them. So you definitely don't have to use this. Um, you can use the Dollar Tree method and that's going to be a lot cheaper for you. However, we really liked how this greenery from Ikea turned out. For this project, we're going to use this little glass vase and this Rust-Oleum spray paint. This is a high gloss white spray paint. So the idea here is to give it a little bit of a marble look. After the paint has completely dried, we're going to move on to hydro dipping. And we're just using a couple of these nail polishes from Dollar Tree. We're using kind of a metallic silver and then also this black. And then what we're doing in here is we're just going to spread a few drops around and let it spread out. We're going to do that with the black and the silver. Once we have the color in the water, just take a little stick and swirl that around. Gives it a little bit more design. And then we're going to take our vase and slowly dip it in. Now the bowl that I was using wasn't quite big enough so I had to turn the bowl as you can see to get coverage around the whole thing. Now this was the first time that I've actually hydro dipped anything. It was really fun to do. Um, if you guys would like to see a few more projects like this let us know in the comments what you think and what you'd like to see. As you can see it gives it kind of that marbled look. Uh, it's a lot of fun to do and uh, turns out really nice once you're done. Next, I'm gonna use this sponge from Dollar Tree and just slide it in a little ways. That way I don't have to have rocks in the entire vase. I can just have it on the top here. And then we're gonna use this little um, succulent from Dollar Tree as well to go on top. We ended up using this vase for a little planter for the succulent and then also a makeup brush holder.
we're going to start with this little planter. Now I am using these coasters from Dollar Tree and I'm just scraping the back off here. It's like a little cork and you don't have to do the whole thing, but you want to clear enough of it off so that the coasters themselves will fit flush on each other. And then I try to line them up so the designs kind of connect when we glue these together. And then I'm just gonna go around and glue one to another until I've completed the square here. And we're using hot glue. As we always recommend guys, if you are wanting a stronger hold, use something stronger like E6000. If you're doing wood, wood glue, something like that. We use the hot glue just for time purposes so that we can get these crafts done a little bit quicker for you guys and get the videos done. And I'm sure you guys have seen these coasters at Dollar Tree. They have some other really cool designs. I felt this one fit in with kind of the boho, mid-century modern look a little bit better than some of the others. But you can also use a lot of the other coasters to do some really cool little succulent planters like this. I'm curious, what do you think? Do you think this looks better, more of boho or mid-century modern look? Let me know in the comments what you guys think. For the bottom, I'm just gonna take some foam board that we have on hand and line it up with the edge there. And then we're gonna cut out a little square to go at the bottom of this. You don't need anything crazy. Uh, I'm just gonna be putting a few rocks in here and a Dollar Tree planter. Now, if you're looking at putting in some heavier things, maybe use uh, something that's a little bit more durable than foam board, but this works out perfect for us. And then you've probably seen in other videos, I like to take a couple of these tumbling tower blocks and glue at the very bottom. That way it has something to rest on. And then what we'll do is flip it over and we're gonna take that foam board and then just push it down so that it's resting on those blocks. And then for a little extra support, we can go ahead and use some hot glue to glue it in there. Once we have all of that complete, we can move on and add our succulent. We're just using this one that we got from Dollar Tree and I just pulled it off the top here since all we need is the succulent. And then I put some foam in the bottom, that way we can keep the weight down and we don't have to use as many rocks. And then we'll just go ahead and put the succulent on top. And I think this is really cool guys. It's kind of a retro feel and that way it works with the boho or mid-century modern. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. For our first project, we're going to be using these little wood boxes from Dollar Tree and these smaller bamboo skewers, also from Dollar Tree. And we're actually only going to be using this inner part. So this bigger box, you can save that for another craft. I always love trying to use these items as much as I can for different projects. And for this one, all we need is the smaller box. For this project, you will need three of these little boxes. So just make sure to have those available and then these skewers. So we're gonna start by cutting the skewers all around the outside edges. Now, I wish it was as simple as just measuring one of these boxes and cutting. However, they are all a little bit different in size. So what I would recommend doing is lining up the skewers on all of the different sides just to make sure they fit better. Because if you measure it off of one side, the other side might be a little bit short or long and we don't want to have that. Now that we have everything cut, we can move on to staining. We're using this dark walnut stain to do all three boxes and the skewers. Now, originally what I wanted to do with these is create like a mini planter with greenery or flowers. I also thought you could use it for like office organization. So if you're doing that, I would recommend staining the entire inside of the box since you will most likely see that. But since my idea was to have these as mini planters and even hang them on the wall, I'm not gonna worry about staining the back of them or the inside since they'll be covered with greenery or flowers. Once everything's been stained, we can move on to gluing these pieces. Now we're just gonna take all of these little wood pieces that we cut and glue them around the outside edges of that square. Once we have those outside pieces glued down, we can measure the inside for our X. 
Again, this is one of those things where you will want to measure each part individually because the X that we're making here won't necessarily be the same as the X's on the other side of the box or the other boxes. So even though it's a little bit more tedious, I would recommend doing that just to make it look a little bit cleaner and have those pieces fit better. Once you have all those cut to size, you can go ahead and stain those again with a dark walnut stain, and then we'll go ahead with gluing those on. Once you've completed the X on the front, you can simply do the same thing on both the other sides. Again, just measuring those to make sure that they fit properly. And then you can do all three of those steps with the other three planters if you choose to do that many. And then this greenery is some that we got from Walmart. I believe it's a dollar, dollar fifty for one pick and there's quite a bit that comes with it. And then I'm just pulling these individual stems off to fit into each box. Originally, I was going to hang these on the wall as little mini planters, but I decided to just put it on the table. I think it looked really pretty as table decor, but if you see here, you could put a nail on the wall and then just hook it on the back. Let me know in the comments, guys, would you use it as table decor on the wall as kind of a floating planter or as maybe like office organization? For this project, we're going to use this little cactus cup, I guess you would call it. From Dollar Tree. I thought it was actually a really neat little um, piece that they had there, but I wanted to make it a little bit more modern, so I'm using this gloss black spray paint to give it a nice gloss modern look to it. Uh, make sure to put a couple coats on this and then let it dry before doing anything else. I'm just using a couple paper towels here to stuff in the bottom, that way we don't have to use very many rocks. Now I thought about putting like a stripe or even maybe splattering some paint, maybe a bright color or gold or something like that on the side. I thought it would be kind of a cool look, but I decided not to just keep it all black. Let me know if you guys think that would have looked better with the spray paint or splatter paint on it, or if you like it as is. This decor piece, I've been trying to figure out a way to dupe for a while. Um, I have seen a lot of other people use cake pans from Dollar Tree, but I decided to use this lime green bucket. I'm going to be spray painting it with this metallic silver spray paint. To get the front piece, just trace out the whole bucket onto foam board. Then make a line somewhat in the middle. It doesn't have to be exact, it's just how far up you want the flowers to go. It will line up on the front like this. You can cut it a little bit smaller to go more on the inside of the bucket, but I didn't like how that looked. This is what it'll look like after a few coats of that spray paint. To distress it, I went in with that ink chalk paint that we used before and I am dry brushing it on and then I'm taking a wet paper towel to just move all the product all over so it's not so harsh. You'll use this method around the whole entire bucket and then to give it less of a smeared look, with that same paper towel I started dotting or splotching on to the bucket just to make it have a little bit more texture. Once we finish that bucket with the black paint, you will do the same thing to that front piece of the foam board. Use the same method so that they look very similar. To add just a little bit more rust look, I'm going in with the truffle chalk paint also from Waverly. I did the same method, just dry brushing it on and then taking that wet paper towel and just dotting it all over. And then don't forget to work on that front piece as well.
when those are finished and dry, we are going to hot glue it onto the bucket. Just put hot glue on the curved portion and put it directly on the bucket. I'm using a little bit of floral foam so that I can put it in the base to fill up just some space but also to hold the plants in place. This plant is from Walmart. I wanted more of a draping plant and I couldn't find it anywhere at Dollar Tree. The rest of the plants that I'm using are all just succulents or air plants from Dollar Tree. Let me know in the comments below where your favorite place to buy greenery is. To grab these wood planks from Dollar Tree, they are a newer item that I have noticed and they are at the Crafter Square Dollar Trees. They come in a pack of six. We will only be using five of them today, so four of them will be the sides, and then the fifth one we will be cutting in half. Just measure out the middle of one of the planks, make a line, and that's where we're going to cut. What we use to cut all of our wood is this Black & Decker jigsaw. We have really enjoyed it and it's very affordable. And there's a link in the description for that below. After you've cut, you will just need to sand the edges. When all that is complete, we're going to start assembling the box. So you'll take one of the smaller sides and put it onto one of the front pieces. Now you will just hot glue the two front pieces together. To give it some extra support, I grabbed these popsicle sticks from Dollar Tree and I just put some hot glue on there and I'm putting it on the inside of the front part. Then just add the other end. Then you will do the same thing for the other side. So glue the two ends together and then put the two popsicle sticks on top. And then you will just hot glue that part onto the rest of the box. For the base, you could definitely use more of those wood planks, but I decided just to use some foam board. So go ahead and line up the foam board with your box and just trace it out. To stain everything, I use this dark walnut stain by Minwax. I would love to hear in the comments below some of your favorite stains that you use. To make the handles, I'm using one of these 12 inch dowels from Dollar Tree and I'm going to measure at 3 and at 6 inches and that will be the actual handle part. And then you will want to cut 4 smaller pieces just to put on the end of the handle so that it sticks out from the box. The pieces don't matter too much in length, just make sure that they are all the same size and that you sand them down. And then we will just hot glue them on. I decided to spray paint it with the Krylon Fusion Gloss Black spray paint. While those are drying, we're going to go ahead and put the base into the box. So put hot glue all the way around and then just slide it into the base. The 
this is what the handles look like after the spray paint and I really liked how they turned out. You can do these more of a metal color, kind of whatever you feel like. And then just hot glue those on as well. I wanted the front to have a little bit more design to it, so I'm putting, it's going to say number one on the front. This stencil is from Dollar Tree, and I'll be painting all of it with the Waverly chalk paint and the color ink. If you are to do this, I would choose just a different number. In the end, it ended up saying no one instead of number one, and that kind of bugged me, so I would choose just any other number. To get the number portion, I will be putting the N from 1 and the O also from 1 on there. And then I just use the I from 9 for the little dot. Then I used just a different stencil that I had on hand to write box going vertically. Since this is more of a farmhouse design, I went over the top just with some sandpaper to make it look more worn. To fill the box, I'm using these peonies that I got from Amazon and there's a link in the description below for these. A few people have mentioned that we should show how we put the flowers inside. Let me know in the comments if you like us showing how we arrange things or not. Also, if you're ever wondering on all the products that we used, just check out the description below. And this is what the finished product looked like. For this project, we're going to be using three of these tin cans. Now you want to make sure you get these small ones, not the full size ones. Usually there's like tuna fish or chicken that come in these ones. And then go ahead and remove the wrapping and we're going to spray paint these. It can be any dark color really. This is just a dark one that I have. It's charcoal chalk paint from Rust-Oleum and give it a good coat of spray paint. While we're waiting for the paint to dry on our cans, we can move on to the clothes pins. So for standing, I like to take them apart. You don't have to do this. You definitely can leave it together, but sometimes you can miss different areas since it's hard to get in between them when they're together. So I choose to take them apart and then stain them. Now I'm using this dark walnut stain from Minwax. And originally I was gonna use a rag, but I felt like it was a little bit difficult to get in some of those crevices so I switched to a foam brush, painted it on, and then wiped the excess off with the rag. After we have them all stained we can put them back together. If you're wanting an easier way I would definitely just leave it together and try and get as much coverage as you can. It can be a little bit of a pain putting them back together. That's just what I choose to do. Now as you can see here there's some of the paint missing off the can. I just did a quick fit before this just to make sure everything was looking good that's why you can seal the paint on the can if you'd like to but it's really not necessary since the clothespins will be covering all of that up and then what we can do is just start clipping these on going all the way around and then where there's a little bit of the paper from the label i would put that on the back and then once you get towards the back you will need to space them out just a little bit so that that all fits on there correctly 
I wanted to give you guys a few different options that you could go with when this is complete. So the first one, obviously just being a little planter, you could put some greenery or flowers in here and I think it would look really pretty just like that. Another option would be to put some sort of light source in there, whether that's just like a puck light or a candle. Now, these are some smaller candles from Dollar Tree. I couldn't find the bigger one, but you could definitely put one of those. I wouldn't do a real candle just because of the wood and stain. Some sort of electric candle I think would work perfectly. Now, another option would be putting an actual live plant in there or some herbs. Um, this I think would look really good if you had a pot or a liner to go in there with some soil and you could put this in your kitchen with some live herbs and then with this little chalkboard you could put the names on there i thought that was a really fun cute idea and, or even glue it on the front like this you could see here would definitely be a great option that you could go with if you do go with that option again you would just want to make sure you have like a liner or a pot to go in there to hold the soil and then the last option is kind of what I mentioned, and uh, like a puck light or another electric source for light would make a really cool light. You could put it out um, like on your patio furniture or something like that. I think it would look really pretty that way. Um, let me know though what you guys think in the comments, which option you'd go with if you're doing this. We're going to be doing our hanging planter and i'm really excited for this project i wanted to keep it simple and easy for you guys to do but add a little bit of character with some of the distressing and then the stain so first thing we want to do is go ahead and cut off that threaded end of the plunger and then we can stain it with that same dark walnut stain To hang it, we're gonna be using these utility hooks from Dollar Tree, and I didn't wanna keep them brand new shiny, so we're gonna add some distressing. The way I like to do this personally is with a wet sponge. So get a little bit of water handy, and then dump it in there, squeeze out the water, and then dip it in your paint. And then if you feel like the paint's drying up a little bit too much, you can always dip it back in the water. And then we're gonna just dab that all around the hook using an ink chalk paint from Waverly. And we're gonna be doing the same method here with the tin buckets. They look good, like they are galvanized, but they looked a little too new, so I wanted to age them and give them a little bit of distressing. So I haven't done the handle yet and you can see right there it's quite a bit brighter versus the actual bucket has now been darkened quite a bit. After we add our first base layer of that ink paint what we can do now is go in with more of that ink paint. Now this you can still water it down or if you'd like to do it a little bit more just straight paint. You take your same sponge dip it in your paint and then go along the bottom and you can go along the top or even that little ridge that's kind of at the top of the bucket and that way we're going to give it a little bit more distressing around the top and the bottom just those edges where you'd see more wear and then the final part is to add some of this waverly antique wax to give it some of the brown color and add a little bit more to that rust i like to usually use a few different colors it just gives it more dimension and more character now this part's Totally optional. I thought it was really cute to add this little sign from Dollar Tree with the fresh eggs daily and the chicken. You don't have to add that. You could add like a third bucket in the middle there if you wanted to, or just completely leave that space blank. But I thought it was a cute addition if you wanted to put this in like your kitchen area. I think it would be perfect. The greenery, this is um, a pick from Ikea. I believe it was about $5, so you could just add simple greenery like this. Or if you wanted to, what I decided to do is add some lamb's ear and some lavender. And then a quick tip for you guys, maybe you already know this or do this, but if you wanna add a little volume and make it easier for you to arrange the plants and uh, use less, you can stick some garbage bags or 
grocery bags here at the bottom and then it'll help you arrange it and make it look more full without using as much greenery or flowers. So again, I'm just arranging the lamb's ear and the lavender in here as needed. And I'm curious what you guys think when I was talking about the little sign here in the middle. Would you guys use the sign? Do you like how that looks or do you prefer it with no sign at all? Or would you add a third bucket in the middle? Let me know in the comments what you guys would do. To hang it on the wall, we're gonna use these utility hooks that we painted and put them on each end. And then the buckets will hang in the middle, that little middle gap of where the hooks are. And then we'll put one on each side. Again, like I said, if you wanted to remove the sign, you could, and you could add a third bucket in the middle, whichever one you prefer. was so easy to do. I got two of these wall pocket hangers that I'm pretty sure are new to Dollar Tree. I haven't seen them until just recently. I cut this out using our Cricut and I think it came out so cute. It's very minimal, still modern, but very cutesy. And it is kind of this gold foil, which is really, really pretty on the black. Something that I wish I did for this project, since it does go around something that is curved, is I wish I cut the transfer tape on the bottom in a few spots and on the top so that it kind of curves with the whole entire project. That would have worked a lot easier. It did turn out just fine, but on the next one that we do, the straight line isn't as straight as it should be if you kind of use that technique and cut the transfer paper so that it just fits a lot easier. So this one, I can't keep any plants alive. I don't know if it's just a me thing or if you guys struggle with this too, but I really, it just, it doesn't matter what it is. I can't keep it alive. So this sign works great for me. And then I grabbed these magnets from Dollar Tree in the crafters section and I'm just going to be putting them on the back. Don't put them in the little spaces that look like they're perfect for magnets. It is kind of curved in and it won't stick to whatever you're putting it on as well, like a fridge or a sign. These came out so cute, only cost about $2, 2 to $3, and you could sell them easily for about 10 For this project, I really wanted to try and use something that I haven't seen a lot of people use for crafts, but a lot of Dollar Trees carry. So I'm going to be using these shower curtain rings. What I did for the little candle holder is I just took a bunch of the shower curtain rings and I just glued them together, of course, with the hook part in the back. If you decide to make this, I would recommend spray painting or painting it first before you glue it together. It is just a lot easier and it covers all the crevices a lot better if you spray paint it first. This is what it looked like after I put all of the shower curtain rings together. For this next one, you will grab one of these vases from Dollar Tree and we will kind of be doing the same concept, but we will be spray painted with the satin almond Krylon spray paint first. While you're spray painting those, go ahead and spray paint the first project as well. After it was done drying, I decided to hook them around the vase like this and then I just glued them in the back just so that they were a lot more secure. I would definitely recommend hot gluing everything in the back. If you do it in the front, it just ends up a lot more sloppy.
I really liked how the vase turned out. The other one, I felt like it just needed a little bit more. So I put one of these small glass containers in the top and I would put a real candle in the top. All I had was one of these electric ones. Let me know what you think of these projects. I was really excited to try and use something that I haven't used before. So just let me know if it worked out. Now for this next project, to make the planter, you're going to grab some nautical rope from Dollar Tree and hot glue it in a spiral pattern. You can make this however big you wanted. I didn't want a huge planter. So just when you're finished, cut off the end and hot glue onto there. And then to make the whole sides of the planter, you're going to grab that same nautical rope and start on top all around the edges. When one of the nautical rope ends, you'll just connect the two at the very top, get it as close as you can and just keep hot gluing. Once it's as tall as you want, just cut off the excess and hot glue it. Then I put floral foam inside. And I'm going to be using this greenery that I got from Dollar Tree. Then go ahead and stick it in the floral foam. And then to finish it off, I added white rocks from Dollar Tree. For this project, we're gonna be using these two glass bowls from Dollar Tree and making little succulent planters. And we're gonna be taping it off halfway to do half gold and half white. And then what I did here is I filled the bowl halfway with water and I'm gonna follow the line where the water is with the tape. So a pretty cool tip here and it was actually shared with us on a recent video from Sherry Bora. So thank you so much for sharing that with us. It helped a lot to get that straight even line. And then once you've taped it off, go ahead and spray paint the bottom white. I used Krylon gloss white spray paint to do that. And then we're gonna tape the white part off and spray the top with a gold spray paint from Rust-Oleum. Now you do wanna make sure you give this time. So maybe give it an hour to dry that way when you put the tape on and peel it off it doesn't remove that white paint and then that way we can get those two separate colors one thing to keep in mind when you're spray painting glass is that you want to add multiple coats don't try and get coverage on your first coat you're going to create drips by doing this and keep your can quite a ways away from it you almost want to just mist it and go back and forth on it and create those layers or those coats so that you can avoid those drip marks. For this vase, we're gonna be using this 11 foot nautical rope from Dollar Tree. This is that white rope's a little bit different than the other one. And the first thing that we wanna do here is take the little piece of tape off of each end and then we're gonna actually unravel this whole thing so that we have the three separate strands. Once we have all these strands separated, we're going to braid these together to get a little bit of a unique look or just more character instead of just a rope when we wrap this around the vase. So I just tied mine in a little knot. You can also just use a little bit of hot glue to glue those ends together. And then you will need something to hold it down as you're braiding it. Once you have that secured, you can start braiding this and you want to go ahead and braid the entire rope. 
If you have someone that can help you with this to kind of control the back part from getting tangled up, that will definitely make this easier since it's such a long rope. And then here in a second, I'll show you, we don't actually need to use the entire braided part, but I would recommend just braiding all of it first. And then at the end, you can use the remaining part for the top of the vase. And then right here, just put a little bit of hot glue to connect the ends. Like I said earlier, you can do this at the very beginning instead of tying the knot. But if you tie the knot, just undo that and then glue it right here. And then that is gonna be our starting point for where we start wrapping this around the vase and gluing it down. And just so the threads weren't going everywhere, I waited for the hot glue to cool down a little bit and then I just pinched that together so it was nice and tight. Now that we have our rope ready, we can move on to gluing it onto our actual vase. So run a little line of glue on the bottom there and I'm just using hot glue. That should work just fine for this project. I don't think you guys need anything stronger. And then I would wrap it around a little bit more and then put some glue all the way around till you get to where you started. And then once we get to where we started, what we wanna do is just move up a little bit from there. So as you work your way all the way around, you'll see we'll meet up with the starting point right here. And then just glue it up into that point and then wrap it up a little bit around that and then you can start your second row. Really, really simple. That's what I love about this project is um, pretty straightforward, easy project, but I think the end result is very, very elegant and beautiful. When you get close to finishing up the braided part of this project, what you want to do is keep in mind where you started. So you want to glue this all the way around to where you originally started since you're going to see those seams and then we want to cut it off right there. And then this is where you want to unravel the remaining amount that's been braided because we're going to use those three strands to finish off the top of this base. Now that we have the three separate strands, we're going to use these to finish off our design for the vase. So instead of doing the braid all the way up, this just gives it a little bit more character. And what we want to do is start in the back where we have our seams. That's one thing that you may think of doing is just wrapping around all the way until you run out of the string. But to make this look as good as possible, you want to keep in mind where all of those seams are. So by wrapping it around to the seams and cutting it off, it's going to give it that really crisp, polished look. So this should have a little bit of extra string left over once you get around to the backside, as you can see here. So you just want to cut off the remaining amount and then glue that down. And then you're going to do that with the other two strings as well. And just to give you guys a few ideas while you're making this, if you wanted to, since they do have the two different nautical robes, they have this one and the one that's a little bit more of a brown or tan color, you could use some of that for maybe half of it or a third of it and then this for the remaining amount. There's a lot that you could do to kind of give it a different feel. I was going for more of a neutral kind of boho feel for this, so I went with just the one single white color. You could also add some different paints if you wanted to kind of add in some tribal designs. There's really a lot that you could do. That's why I love working with this rope. But I just want to give you guys a few other ideas while you're making this. And to finish this up, we're going to use a couple picks from Walmart. Now these were only 98 cents each. So anytime we can, we always love to take it up just a little bit and the Dollar Tree products aren't always the greatest, and if you can get away with a similar price but a much higher look, I would definitely recommend it. For this first craft, we are going to start out with one of these circle boxes from Dollar Tree. They kind of are just in theme with whatever holiday is happening, so mine happens to be this Christmas one. And then you're going to grab a pack of these Dollar Tree skewers. What we are going to do is just cover this whole entire thing with these skewers. So we are going to start by just hot gluing one on the side. So go ahead and just start wrapping them around. I just did a small line of hot glue and then we'll just put it on and then just kind of push it on for a second. It seemed to stick just fine. I don't think you would need a stronger glue for this project. 
And then just keep going in a line all the way around. Try and make sure that you're going as straight as possible. And then at the bottom, just make sure that you are pushing all the way down so that it is flush at the bottom as well. And then once you have several lined up, I went in with some wire cutters and just cut them at the very top. I tried to cut several at the same time and it kind of just didn't work. So then I just went one at a time or a couple at a time and it worked just fine. Once those are cut, those same skewers that we just used, you can reuse them again for another line. After I cut that section down, I realized that I could get one more section out of that with the same skewers. So one skewer can get you three separate sections. When you get to the end, we just keep doing the same thing, just keep adding all of the skewers. After I cut those down, I just sanded them down slightly so that they were more even. Since I don't want to fill this whole entire box with rocks, I put just a smaller box in the bottom and then I filled the rest just with some paper towels so that just the top layer will be filled with rocks. Then I just filled the whole top layer with these Dollar Tree white rocks. After I did that, I just grabbed these succulents. They come in all these different types and a lot of them you do have to pull out of those little pots or they come in these clips. I was originally going to leave it just this color but it was a little bit too yellow for me so I went in with this Waverly Antique Wax and I grabbed this Dollar Tree sponge and just went over the whole entire thing. This is what it looked like when it was finished. I thought it came out really cute. It just gives quite a bit different look to it. Let me know in the comments which one you like better. Okay, so moving on to this vase. This was a lot of fun to work on. However, if you've never worked with these little sticker beads, they can kind of be difficult to, I guess, form how you want it. But the more you do it, you kind of get used to working with it. So the first thing that you want to do is start at the very top with one of these strands. And then I worked just diagonally across it and down to the bottom. So we don't want to go straight down. We want to work across the vase and then down to the bottom. As you get to the bottom, you can go ahead and cut off the excess of the beads that you have there. Now, the easiest way that I found to do this was to split your vase into quarters. So wherever you started your first strand, I went directly across from that and I started my second strand of beads and just trying to keep kind of the same line and diagonal um, movement that I did on the first strand of beads. And then again, as you get to the bottom, you can cut that off. Okay, now that we have two of these strands down, we can simply put the next two in between these. Again, we're trying to section it off into quarters. So place it at the top of the vase in between the two strands. And then you'll wanna run that down diagonally. Once we have the four going in the same direction, we wanna repeat this process, sectioning it off into quarters. But what we wanna do is go the opposite way now, diagonally down to the bottom of the vase. So 
pick two strands of beads here, like you can see, and then we'll want to place this one in between those at the top. And then as you come down, you will intersect the original strand. So go ahead and cut those off. And then we can continue on the other side of that. Now, if you end up cutting, say like one, two or three pieces of the bead strand, uh, what we wanna do is save that for later. So go ahead and place it on the mat that they come on originally. Because once we get to the end of this vase, we will need some of those smaller strands to complete this. And I'll show you that a little bit later. And while you're placing the beads on here, I would suggest to just lightly lay them down on the vase to get an idea of the direction or the line that you need to go. And then once you figure out how many beads you need in between these strands before you cut it, just gently lay it down on the vase. That way you don't have to worry about trying to pull it up off. They do stick really well. So if you press it down hard, if you try to pull it off, it can rip the beads off of that glue that it comes with. So just gently lay it down, get an idea of where you need to put it. And then once you've cut it and you know exactly where it needs to go, then you can press it down for a firmer hold. Okay, so once we have all of those strands from the top running to the bottom, the next part we wanna do is go in between all of these gaps and we're gonna create like a diamond shape. We're gonna just follow the lines that we've created with another inner line. Hopefully this is all making sense. I think with me kind of explaining it and visually being able to see it, you'll understand what I'm saying here. So once we've gone through and put these diamonds in those gaps, you can see it looks like now instead of having one strand come from the top to the bottom, it looks like we ran three. So those eight original strands now kind of look like three and that's the effect that those diamonds will give. So if that doesn't make sense, please let me know in the comments so I can try and help answer any questions. And to finish it up, we're gonna use this Krylon spray paint in gloss wipe. If you guys have a brand of spray paint that you really like to use, let us know in the comments. I'd love to know what paint you find the best. And to finish it up, we're going to use some eucalyptus. Now I wanted to give you a couple options that you guys could go with. These two smaller picks are from Walmart and they were, I believe, about $1.50. This bigger one I think would look good as well, uh, about $3 or $3.50. And the other option that looks really good is the fern from Walmart. And that I believe is also $1.50. For this project, we're using this tray from Dollar Tree and we'll be using this charcoal spray paint from Rust-Oleum. It's a chalk spray paint, so it gives it a nice matte finish. Once we've painted the entire tray, we're gonna go ahead and use these white rocks also from Dollar Tree. I have to apologize, these are just rocks that we've had left over from other projects, so I'm not sure how many bags you'll need. I would assume though you will need a few bags from Dollar Tree. After we've placed all of our rocks, we can move on to the succulents. This is just a little succulent clip that we got from Dollar Tree, and we're going to place one of these in each section of the tray. That's really all there is to this project. It's very simple, but I think it turns out very beautiful, it has a nice, clean, modern look. For this project, we're going to be creating a really simple boho planter using this plastic bucket and these two 
rugs from Dollar Tree. The first thing that I'm gonna do is cut off the ends so that we just have a flat edge and then we're going to wrap this around the bucket using both of these rugs. So the first thing that I did was take one of the rugs and then we're going to slide it down inside the bucket until we get to this white line here and that's gonna go along the top edge of the bucket and then that will actually go all the way down to the bottom of the bucket. So it creates a really even layout for your planter here and then it will cover the whole thing as well. Also by sticking it down in, it'll cover up some of that pink on the inside of the bucket so that you don't see that. So the first thing that I did here was start at the bottom and I'm just gluing this corner down using some hot glue. Once we have that bottom corner glued, I'm just going to work my way around and kind of pulling this to keep it tight and gluing it all the way around the bottom edge of this bucket until I get to the other corner. Now because the bottom of the bucket is a little bit smaller than the top, this won't fit um, absolutely perfect. It does start to angle up as you can see here, but what we wanna do now is glue this edge down and pull it as much as we can to try and even that out. So glue, pull it, glue it a little bit there, and then as we get to the top, we wanna stretch that even more so that we're creating these um, horizontal lines instead of having them angle up towards the top. Ultimately, if it's not perfect, that's okay because we will add this other mat to try and even those out a little bit. Now, since we don't need as much, I am going to cut in a little bit more here and you may have to make some adjustments and um, you don't want it to be too big wrapping around to the front of this. We want to try and keep this towards the back. So cut off a little bit more and then we're just going to do the same thing. Slide this down inside the bucket and then align that white part at the very top. Now, if it looks like this a little bit off, then what you need to do is just take it out and flip it because you put it in the wrong way. So I had to actually just take it out and then flip it the other way and then it should line up just perfect. And then again, what I'm doing is just gluing it right at the top here. The main thing that you wanna do here is focus on getting these lines to match up. So you're getting the black part and then the white part. That way, when you look at it from the side, it looks pretty good. The last thing that you want is for these to not line up and then it just doesn't look as clean in the end. Now you can see if I pull this tight, this one angles really far up. So what we want to do is pull it and then we're going to actually cut it on an angle now so that we can try and straighten this out a little bit. And then what we're going to do here is again, just try and pull it and straighten it out so that those lines match up. So originally I was trying to keep it towards the back so you didn't see it, but I kind of like the um, fringe that almost has like a, like you have tassels on the side here. I thought it was kind of cool. So what I would do is if you're wanting that look, I would actually just try and keep it half and half so that if you do the fringe on the side, you're splitting the bucket directly in half because the way I did it, it ended up more towards the back. I didn't like that as much, but I do like the look. I think it adds a little bit more style, especially if you're going for the boho look. So what I would recommend is cutting your rugs so that when you lay them down and you have this fringe part here, it's you have one of that on one side of the bucket and then you have the other on the other half so that if you're looking at the bucket straight on you can see on both sides and i think it would look really pretty that way mine was just a little bit too far towards the back uh, but i do like that style on there once we have everything wrapped we can move on to adding our plants and i'm using a couple that i got from michael's 70 percent off so a lot of stuff that we can get from Dollar Tree or Walmart, maybe online, at good prices and it's going to look good. One thing I would recommend though, for plants, get the nicer plants when they're on sale or you can get a good deal because it will make your projects look a lot better in the end.
For this project, we're going to be using this planter from Dollar Tree and we're going to give it a nice makeover and make it look a lot better, a lot higher end. And what I'm doing to start is using this matte white spray paint from Krylon and this polished hemp. Um, you can get that from Walmart for I think like four or five dollars. And then I just cut a few long pieces, maybe like four feet. I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do, but what I started with was just gluing the end together here and braiding it. I knew I wanted to do something with a braid. And ultimately I just went for something really simple and clean. I'm just gonna glue this along this uh, top edge here and just go all the way around with that braided rope. And I thought about doing a few other things, uh, maybe adding some handles or adding more rope to this, but I wanted to just kind of keep it simple, a really clean, kind of a modern boho look. So let me know if you think I should have done a little bit more to it or if you like the more minimal look to this. So obviously we're gonna just glue this all the way around to the back here and then trim it so that we can uh, lay that down and glue the seam. And then you could use this for maybe succulents. I'm gonna use kind of a medium sized plant or if you wanted to use uh, kind of a taller tree or taller plant, you could definitely do that. Now, I'm just doing this to show you, this is some uh, micro plants. They were, I think 70% off for like $4. It's a big, huge one that we cut down. And then when you put this in here, you could even cut some foam board to cover up this gap here and then lay some moss or dirt on there to, to fill in that empty space. But ultimately, I think it turned out absolutely beautiful. pink candle from Dollar Tree and then also this small glass from Dollar Tree and we're going to be using them to make kind of these geode looking planters. To give it that look, we're going to be using this crushed glass also from Dollar Tree. For this smaller glass, I didn't want it clear so I spray painted it with this matte river rock and then I took off all of the packaging on the candle. I couldn't really get the stickers off that well. On the opposite side it does have another sticker and so you can kind of use goo gone and try and get it off. The front one I decided not to try too hard just because I'm going to be covering it with these glass pieces. For this first one, it was my first time doing this, so I kind of just placed them wherever I wanted and it kind of doesn't matter too much what you do. You just put them on. I did the bigger shards first and then I went in with smaller ones and put them on top so that it gave it a really, really nice full effect and made it look really, really beautiful. For the next one, I do it a little bit differently so that it works just a little bit better because here in a little bit, I'm going to be going over with some gold paint just to make it look just a little bit better, a little bit more high end. And I did that after I put all of these glass pieces on. In the other one, I do the shape first and then I do the glass pieces. As you can see, you just kind of keep building it up so that you fill in all of the gaps and it just looks very, very beautiful. I don't have any paint markers that would work, which would be so much easier than what I'm doing here. So I just used some gold spray paint that we had and sprayed it into a cup and then I'm going to be going around. A marker would probably work a lot better. This I had to do a few layers and the brush made it so that there was brush strokes. And so if you can find a gold pen that's this vibrant and not dull, I would definitely use that instead. And like I said earlier, I went in with the gold after on this first one and went around. It doesn't give it a bad look, but it's just kind of a different look. The second one does look a little bit different and you can compare those here in a few minutes. This is how the candle ended up looking. Let me know in the comments what you think about it below. And now that this gray one has dried, I do wish it was a little bit darker gray, almost looking kind of like a rock, but I still think this looked super pretty. So I'm going to be drawing the shape first and then putting the shards on. So I did kind of a different shape as well, 
making it look more just like a piece. So I just went across the whole entire side and then I'm going to be making that line quite a bit thicker. This one, I decided to use these blue shards instead and I think they look super, super pretty. And just like I did on the first one, you want to just put them all over. I started again with bigger pieces and kind of just put them all over and then went in with the smaller ones and put them on top and filled in all of the gaps. You will want to make sure the rocks get really close to that gold line so that none of the gray in the middle is showing. This is what it looks like finished. Let me know in the comments below if you guys liked the pink one more or if you liked the blue one. Bells, this uh, plunger handle, and then also these little wood boxes from Dollar Tree. So you will need one plunger and then six of these little 12 inch dowels, and then three of those wood boxes. I'm gonna go ahead and start by spray painting the plunger handle and the dowels with that matte black spray paint from Krylon. Now, while we're waiting for the paint to dry, we can go ahead and move on to staining our boxes and you'll want to keep the little inserts that go in here because you can definitely use those for other crafts. And then what I'm using here is the early American stain from Minwax. Go ahead and stain all of these, the inside and outside. For the inside though, you don't have to go all the way down and get all of it. Anytime we can save product by just doing what we need to, we like to do that. So if you want to and have that full complete look, you can, but we're gonna be putting stuff in there so it won't really matter because you're not gonna see the bottom of that anyway. Once everything has dried, we can move on to assembling everything. So what I'm gonna do is take one of the dowels, I'm going to run a little line of hot glue on the edge there, and then we're gonna glue these vertically. So you wanna try and line that up with the side of the box and then the bottom of it. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So you wanna do this on all three of our wood boxes. We're gonna be gluing two of those dowels going vertical. Once we've glued everything on our boxes, we can move on to how we're going to hang this on the wall. And we're going to be using this plunger handle and then some of this suede leather. I believe we got it from Hobby Lobby, um, maybe like five to eight dollars. And it comes with quite a bit of it. So I just cut a little section off here and then I'm going to measure to the center and cut that in half so that we have two separate pieces to hang on both sides of the plunger handle. And so just go ahead and cut that in half and then here in a little bit we'll show you how we're going to hang that. Next what we want to do is find the center of our handle so that we can uh, glue our first box on there. It ended up being about eight and a quarter inches so I just drew a little line with the pencil and then I'm just going to eyeball it here and try and get this first box as center as I can with that line. And then I put a little bit of glue on each end and then just laid this handle on top of it and pressed down until that, that was firm. And then from here, I can just kind of space out everything. I laid my leather strip on the end and then I'm going to line up my other two boxes so that the spacing is pretty equal. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but by doing this, you can get it really symmetrical. If you want to do measurements, you definitely can do that. I think it's just a little bit of extra work and you really won't notice it um, in the long run. So again, I just put a few uh, dabs of hot glue on the ends there, and then I'm going to lift up the handle and then just place it on there and then try and get the bottom of each box lined up with the other boxes and then the gap in between the same as well. That way when you're looking at it, it all looks pretty uniform and symmetrical. 
And then I'm gonna add just a little bit of hot glue here on these seams just to give it a little bit of added strength. Ultimately, they're not gonna be holding much weight, so you should be fine. And again, if you guys wanna use something stronger for a more permanent hold, you can definitely do that. Maybe some wood glue or E6000. We like to use the hot glue and it usually works out just fine for us and holds up pretty well. So to give it some volume and less weight, what I'm doing here is just adding in a couple paper towels kind of roll them up and put them in the box and then we're going to put some rocks on top of those that way it's covering up the paper towel but we're not filling it completely with rocks and adding all that weight and unnecessary product and then i'm just using a couple of succulents and a air plant here to go in these you could do these however you wanted to if you wanted to do a little bit more modern you could do that farmhouse i think this would also look good you could put maybe some like lamb's ear or something in there this really could go with a lot of different decor styles just depending on how you want to decorate it and then we're just going to loop these and then push the thumbtack through those and then the tacks will then go into the wall again there's really not a lot of weight to this so you shouldn't have to worry about those falling out. This project is another West Elm dupe. I thought it could be super, super cute. So once again, I grabbed these boxes. They're a gift box and a craft box. So they will be in two different sections. And all I'm going to be doing is hot gluing the smaller one on the bottom of the bigger one. Just try to get it as center as possible. Since it is hot for a minute, you can kind of move it around and make sure that it's center. Since the top is very shiny, it will give it two different looks unless you sand it. So I just sanded the top one down a little bit so that they looked the same. Then I went in with this satin brick spray paint. I don't have a good terracotta spray paint and I would love your recommendations below. For this planter, we're going to be using seven of these Dollar Tree crates and we're going to be staining them all with this early American stain from Minwax. And as always, feel free to change that up depending on your decor. You can maybe paint it white, do them all black, or different stain, however you'd like to do that. The easiest way that I found to measure this out is to just line five of these up. Now only three of them will go on this first section, but we need the gaps. So I'm just putting in the extra crates to measure this out. And then I'm going to line those up on these five gallon stir sticks and cut them with this jigsaw. Now we're going to need two of these at the same length. So the first piece that we cut, we can use that as a template for the second piece. And these stir sticks are from Walmart. I believe they're like 97 cents for a pack of three. For this middle section, we're going to do the same thing, except for we're only lining up four of these crates. And then we'll go ahead and measure that out and cut it. Now, originally I cut two of these and two of the smaller length. It was late at night. I wasn't really thinking clearly. You only need one of each. So one of this middle length and then one for this shorter one. And we're going to just line up three of these crates, measure that and cut it. Once we have all those cut, again, we're just going to use this early American stain to go ahead and stain all of these sticks. So you should have two of the bigger pieces, one of the medium size and one of the smaller sizes. So the first thing I'm going to do here is go ahead and take one of the longer stir sticks and we're just going to glue it on the side of this crate. Now, so I can get my spacing even, I'm going to take one of the other crates, line it up, and then I'll put the other crate that we're actually gluing on top of that. That will just allow us to get the right spacing so we're not guessing or anything like that. And all of this will line up in the end. So again, just put the middle one in there for the spacing. We're not actually gluing that down and then we'll just glue that middle one. And then again, we'll do the same thing, take another crate, 
put it in there for the spacing, and then we'll glue the top one down. And essentially all we're going to do is just repeat that same process. We're going to glue on the second taller stir stick here on the opposite side, and then we'll go ahead and move on to our other crates. So I'm going to put this one here on the bottom for spacing, and then I will glue this middle piece on here and then move on to the other pieces. So as you can see here, since we're staggering these crates, that's why I'm using these uh, ones in the middle to make sure that all of the spacing is going to be the same throughout and those aren't kind of mismatched or not lining up. And after we have the first two rows complete, we can move on to this medium stir stick. So we want to line this up with the top of the crate there, glue it on the edge, and then that will be flush with the bottom of our entire project. And then there at the bottom, we will add our last row of crates. So this one's just going to glue on that bottom corner. And then the last crate will go in between these two right here in that gap. And then once we have those glued on, we can add our final stir stick, which is gonna be that smallest one, and just glue it right there on the end, like we did the other ones. And that's really all there is, just a few cuts with the jigsaw, but a very simple project, and I think it's really, really beautiful in the end. project I'm going to be using this fishnet decor that I got from Dollar Tree and I'm going to be unraveling all of it. The only thing that I would change with this project is I thought that this netting was a lot tighter and not so spaced apart. So when I put my little vase that I got in the clearance section of Walmart, it was just a little bit too far apart for the desired look that I was going for. So what I did was fold it over so that it's kind of double the netting. It didn't come out as clean, but I still think it came out really, really cute. So I bunched it all up at the top and then I'm going to be using a rubber band like a ponytail just to get that all out of the way so that I can see what I'm working with. Then I cut the excess off I did grab this yarn. I just had it on hand. It's very, very similar to the netting, which I really liked. So I'm grabbing three really long strands and I'm going to be braiding them together just to cover up the seams at the very top so that it looks really clean. Once that was all braided, I moved on to the vase. And so what I did with the vase was I'm going to grab little pieces of the knitting, pull them up towards the top of the vase, and then just hot glue them. I did that all the way around, as you can see, and then I'm going to be cutting off the excess netting so that it's just on the vase itself. I wanted this vase to have kind of a bohemian, almost nautical look. I've seen a lot of people use the cane webbing, which I think does end up looking quite a bit better, but cane webbing is way more expensive than just using this from Dollar Tree. So as you can see, I hot glued those pieces to the top of the vase, and then I'm just going to be cutting off the very top right after the hot glue. Now that we have all of the netting, the extra netting cut off, I'm going to be adding this braid around the whole top. And then I did use as much as I could of the braid. So it doesn't matter if you do two rows, three rows, four rows, it's kind of just whatever you like. So I started just at the very, very top covering up where all of the netting ends. And then I'm just going to be keep wrapping it all the way around until it is finished. Just try and make sure that your seams where you begin and where you end are in the back, just so that it looks a lot cleaner.
So right here, I do have a little bit extra, but I want my seam to be in the back, just where I started. So I did a little bit of hot glue and then cut it and then press it down with the scissors so that it looks just nice and smooth. For this project, we're gonna be using one of these placemats from Walmart. And the first thing that I did here was just run some hot glue and you just need a very little amount all the way across here. What this allows you to do is to cut it and you wanna cut it on the opposite side. And this is gonna make sure that this doesn't come undone or fray on you and it will stay solid. So if you're going to do this, make sure you do that glue. It'll make it a lot easier for you. And then once we have this completely cut off, I'm going to do a little bit more glue all the way across. And I'm just gonna fold this over right where that uh, design is. And that way we're hiding kind of that cut edge. And then we will glue this onto our vase to give it a little bit of uh, extra character and make it something more than just a plain glass vase. So what I decided to do was hang this about in the middle of the vase. And the idea I was doing here was to line up the bottom of the fabric with the bottom of the vase. And there's really a lot that you could do with this. Um, I just wanted to give you a few different ideas of how you could use these placemats from Walmart. But what I'm doing here is just using a little bit of hot glue to glue down that starting point. I'll wrap it all the way around the vase and then cut it where it meets in the back and then glue that down. But there's a lot that you could do with just this if you wanted to put it higher on the vase or if you wanted to maybe have a couple pieces and stagger them or overlap them. Uh, I think there's a lot of options that you can do. And that's what's so fun about going to Walmart or some of these other stores where you can find some clearance items or some of these like a placemat. Sometimes you just look at it and you don't think much of it, but if you kind of think outside the box and how you could use that in your decor projects, you can really transform some of these Dollar Tree items. And I think the end result is really, really pretty. Little planters, what I'm using are these gift boxes from Dollar Tree and it says matte white for the spray paint, but I actually used gloss. I didn't have enough of the matte. And then just quick tip, when you're spray painting, make sure you keep a little bit of a distance, maybe like six inches, eight inches, kind of just see how it's going on. But the main thing that you wanna do is just mist the project. You don't wanna just sit there and spray it heavily cause it's gonna drip if you do that. Add a few coats and kind of mist it, go back and forth on it. And that will really help with the drips. As far as this design, it's just one that I found on Design Space again, and I cut out four of these. And as you can see, I actually pulled up some of that design, but it was really easy to just stick back on there and then kind of squeegee it on and it stuck just fine. And this is one of those projects where you've seen us do some of these really simple but high-end looking planters, but most of the time we don't really have a lot of designs on them. It's just a little bit difficult to do that with the tools that we had. The Cricut makes it so much easier to add some of these extra elements and designs to your projects. And that's what we really love about it. So we're really excited for the opportunity to now create even more for you guys, but also an opportunity for us to start a little business in creating and selling some of these crafts that we make with our Cricut. And I thought it would be fun just to add a little bit more to these uh, boxes. And so I'm just using these little cubes from Dollar Tree. I stain them with that early American stain and then I'm gonna go ahead and glue them on each corner just to add a little bit more character and height on the box. Um, I think the end result adds even more to it and kind of ups that level of quality. And for the second one, it's the smaller one. I already glued on those same cubes and then I'm going to add another design that we cut off of there. And essentially just kind of the same thing. I'm sticking with that black vinyl and kind of a similar design. I wanted to go a little bit different, but I think the end result on both of these is really, really pretty. I love the designs and the look. And I think that these would definitely be statement pieces 
on a small table, entry table, coffee table, nightstand. I think these would be perfect and they look absolutely stunning when they're complete. Thanks for watching guys. We hope you enjoyed today's video. If you want to see more mega videos like this, you can click through right here and check out the playlist with our other mega videos on there. And as always, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you can be notified every time we upload a new video.